Do you love Stardew Valley but want some tips and tricks to enable you to be lazy whilst still having fun? Well, then this video is for you. Hey, if you are new to my channel or have not subscribed yet, here is a limited one-time offer. If you subscribe right now, then you will wake up with a statue of endless fortune right next to your bed. 100% guaranteed to work. Subscribe to get your statue of endless fortune. Alrighty, let's get back to the video. I spoke briefly about the barbered hook fishing tackle in a recent video, but I think I might have been wrong. I continued to test the barbered hook and figured out a way to make it absolutely incredible. So this is how the barbered hook works. It will sort of cling onto the fish and it will move the fishing bar for you to compensate for the fish's movement. When you are at level 10 fishing, this works pretty well for most fish. But it actually fails tremendously against harder fish like the lava eel and the legendary fish. But if you eat some buffed up sea foam pudding, it starts to work incredibly well against most fish. Sea foam pudding will give you plus 4 to your fishing, but if you cook it with key seasoning, it will give you plus 5 to your fishing. That will put you at level 15 fishing, and your fishing bar is quite a bit bigger at level 15 fishing. As you can see from this gameplay, I have been catching fish this whole time. But here is where it gets interesting. I have not been moving the fishing bar at all. The barbered hook has been doing all of the work. There are times when you might need to move it slightly, but only when a fish does a very fast start up or downwards. The barbered hook can only move the fishing bar for you if it's on the fish. So sometimes you might just need to realign the fishing bar and then go back to just spectating. To make this even better, I added the auto hook enchantment to my iridium fishing rod. The auto hook enchantment will simply automatically hook the fish when they bite. Meaning you won't have to click. Pair this with the barbered fishing tackle and you almost have a fully automated fishing. All you need to do is cast your fishing line back into the water. This method will probably not work against legendary fish, but if you are laying back on your chair watching Netflix, but you also want to play Stardew Valley, then this method of fishing is just really, really good. Just cast your line into the water and catch that fish the whole day with barely any concentration on the game. The next tip might be a little bit controversial, but here it goes anyway. There are tons of items to buy at Mr. Key's Walnut Room, and they cost key gems. You can pretty much only get key gems by completing Mr. Key's special order requests. And while some of them are not that hard to do, they don't actually reward you with that many key gems. So you'll have to do quite a few quests to be able to buy what you need. Luckily for us, there's a fun little trick that we can do to make twice as much key gems. Just before you finish a key special order request, plug in your controller and create another character using split screen. Now there are two players in the game, then complete the quest. Now both players will have completed the quest and both players will get key gems. If you completed a quest that gives you 40 key gems, you will instead get 80 key gems. Unfortunately, you cannot trade key gems between players. So you will have to take that split screen character all the way to Ginger Island to redeem the key gems for something. I think this is definitely worth the effort and I usually just make my split screen character sleep at Ginger Island so it's not that far. If you use this method just before you complete every key special order request, you will quickly get every item up for sale. Use this information however you want. This is a pretty simple one, but I absolutely love it. In Stardew Valley, there are four seasons. And in spring, summer and fall, there are specific crops that you will need to plant and replant because spring crops will die in summer, for example. Well, you could just plant a bunch of ancient fruit on the first day of spring. Ancient fruit is the only crop in the game that will grow in spring, summer and fall. So you will only need to plant these crops once a year. 
year. Now we don't need a hoe, replant and water crops again for an entire year. That is already pretty great, but we would still need to manually harvest these ancient fruits every 7 days. Well, we don't have to do that either. Just place some Junimo huts around your ancient fruit and you will have a 100% automated farm. All you need to do is plant the ancient fruit once on the first of spring and then for the rest of the year, you won't have to do a thing. The ancient fruit will regrow every 7 days and they won't die in summer and fall. The sprinklers will keep them watered forever. The scarecrows will keep them safe and the Junimos will harvest the crops for you. Setting something up like this on your farm is game changing and you will find that you have tons more time to do other things like throw tomatoes at the townspeople, farm for cinder shards in the volcano and even find the love of your life. You can do all of this while you automatically print money with some ancient fruit. Keeping track of people's birthdays can be a very daunting task. You either have to check the wiki or you have to walk all the way to Pierre's store to take a look at the calendar. I already struggle with making friends and now I have to walk all the way to Pierre's store to see whose birthday it is? How does no sound? I instead will buy a calendar from Robin's carpentry store for 2000 gold and place it right next to my bed. This way I can get out of bed in the morning and immediately check whose birthday it is. This is actually an incredible time saver and it'll help you not forget about people's birthdays. To make this even more effective, you can place a statue of endless fortune right next to the calendar. Then you can check whose birthday it is and grab their loved gift at the same time, making it basically effortless to keep up appearances and show the townspeople that you care. The Statue of Endless Fortune can be purchased at the casino for 1 million gold. It is expensive and it will never pay for itself but it's worth it for the convenience. This is a very small random tip but if you didn't know it then it will be a game changer. Have you ever tried to buy like 1000 starfruit seeds? Of course you have. Starfruit are the best money makers in the game. To make buying seeds faster, you can hold down the right mouse button to buy one seed continuously at a decent speed. Then you can hold down the shift key and then spam the left mouse button as fast as you can. You will now be buying seeds in batches of 5 while still buying seeds constantly. This results in you being able to buy tons and tons of items in a very short amount of time. Without this trick, I would probably have wasted a lot of time just buying things from the shopkeepers of Stardew Valley. Do you want to get somewhere in a hurry? Well then this tip is for you. It will cost you a ton of gold to set this up but it's definitely worth it. All you need to do is buy a return scepter from Krobus for 2 million gold. You will need to buy every obelisk totaling another 2 million gold. Then do the wizard's special order request where he tasks you with finding prismatic jelly in the regular mines. Now place all of your obelisks in one spot right next to each other and then place a mini obelisk right by your obelisks and then place the other mini obelisk right in front of your house. This way you can use your return scepter to immediately return to your house. You should place your mini obelisk as close to your return point as possible because now you can return home and then immediately use the mini obelisk to teleport to your obelisks and then you can teleport to where any of the four obelisks take you. This method of traveling around the world is absolutely insane. To make it even better, make sure to bring the horse whistle with you wherever you go. So you can teleport to the desert, get on your horse and buy some seeds. Then immediately teleport to your ginger island, get on your horse and plant some seeds. This does take a lot of effort to set up but after you have this set up, you won't regret it. And those are some of the quick tips and tricks to help lazy players be even lazier. And yes, I definitely do utilize every one of these tips in my playthrough because I'm actually pretty lazy. Do you have any of your own tips to be incredibly effective while still barely doing anything? If so, please do share them with us in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in the next video.